Good morning. Uh, please turn your attention to the playing of the fanfare of the class of 2020 by uh, Professor of Music Ching Chu Hu. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, graduates. Members of the class of 2020, parents, families, faculty, staff, and honored guests, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Denison University, I am so delighted to see all of you here in person celebrating together after more than two years of waiting for this day to come. You are truly an amazing class. 2020 graduates, the spring. I think we're all going to have a lot of applause, but Raj has this on a timetable, so I want you to just, you know, use it judiciously. Your senior year was challenging in ways that no other class before you had experienced. Indeed, the last two years have been difficult, at times chaotic and often devastating for so many around the world. Speaking as a trustee, an alum, and a proud parent of a 2020 grad, that's important to add there, here is what we saw happening in the spring of 2020. The pinnacle of your undergraduate experience, your last semester on the Hill, was upended. Denison staff helped many of you through the chaos of being whisked away. They even gathered and mailed your belongings and sometimes included some of your roommate stuff across the miles to you. They helped you make arrangements on the fly. Your in-person goodbyes, if you had them, were quick and incomplete, leaving a profound sense of loss. As you masterfully resumed classes virtually from your childhood bedroom, your parents' basement, your friend's couch, or a car parked somewhere to get better Wi-Fi, the Denison IT department worked nonstop to connect you with your faculty, who were also new to virtual platforms. Meanwhile, some of you also served as your family's IT department, unpaid, but at least you got fed. You adapted to the changing academic requirements while the provost, faculty, and staff ensured that the altered requirements still met a rigorous accreditation standards worthy of a Denison degree. I think that means there are no do-overs here. Faculty talked about how they truly missed you, the senior level scholars that you had become. They missed debating and exploring the richness of your majors they too had a sharp sense of loss. 
In May 2020, your degree was virtually conferred. Again, from your childhood bedrooms, basements, living rooms, and cars, maybe surrounded by your family, but not with your classmates. The bonus was being entertained by actor and alum Steve Carell in real life from his backyard. He was a worthy consolation prize for the graduation via live stream. In June 2020, you should have been pounding the pavement, starting new jobs, and unlocking your potential. Instead, you were busy help being helped by the Knowlton Center staff find online internships. Real jobs were mostly on hold, as employers were unsure of, well, just about everything. So you waited. And like the rest of the world that was shut down, you were suspended in time at a point in your life when you did not expect to be standing still. And that brings us to 2021. Just kidding, for those of you who lived through 2021, all of us, we're gonna forget that right now, and we're gonna fast forward to today. Today, you have earned the right to say for the rest of your life, I was part of the class of 2020. You know, the class that had its second year reunion the day before graduation. Boomers called you the next greatest generation, a mantle that you frankly reject. But you know what? You are the class that is more resilient, more engaged, and more empathetic. Not because of, but truly in spite of the pandemic. You were great even before 2020, and the last two years have proven this. You have adapted to an extraordinary time in history. This story, this history, is now your story and you will carry the story forever. So take time to enjoy this moment of your story. Take stock and take pride in what you have been given and meant to each other. Relish the time to be here again on the Hill. And find some of what you lost in 2020. And know it will always be here for you. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, alumni and parents, thank you class of 2020 for being a special and unique part of Denison family and our history. You have impressed us, you have inspired us, and you have made a tremendous contribution to this college. Thank you for being exactly who you are. Congratulations. So it is now my distinct honor to call to the podium the 20th president of the university, Dr. Adam Weinberg, who will lead us in these proceedings. You came back. Never, ever, ever in our wildest dreams did we think two thirds of you would come back and that so many of your parents would not only come back, I think a few have enrolled in classes for the fall semester. <laughs> I, I will say that that is by far the loudest cheering we've ever had of an incoming class. Um, I, I will also say that um, I know um, at least one of you and maybe more have, have actually gotten married. That's not un uncommon. We've had that before at graduation. We've never actually had students at time of graduation. So many of you actually already have your master's degrees. <laughs> So I want, I want to just start with a few notes of gratitude for, for people who have made today possible. Can I ask the class of 2020 to stand and just face the audience? I was, I was actually going to do just the opposite. Can I get our graduates to give all of the parents, grandparents, mentoring organizations, and others who made your dentist and education a round of applause and a thank you. And if, if I can get you to stand, keep standing, but get the parents and the audience to stand, everybody except for the faculty. 
And can we give all of our faculty and staff who work tirelessly to make this education possible and today possible a round of applause. And now, can I just get the students to sit, or our graduates to sit? And, and finally, can we give the 2020 graduates a round of applause? You are smart, interesting, curious, and engaged. You are empathetic, open-minded, and ethical. You worked hard in the classroom while you were here in labs, performed in an exceptionally high level on athletic fields, artistic studios, and other stages. You learned from each other, and we all have a huge admiration for you. Catherine put it well. Um, you are hereby anointed the most resilient class in Denison history. Own it with pride. Be proud of yourselves. We're proud of you. Could we just give them one more round of applause? So before I start my remarks, um, one, of, one of our customs at Denison is to recognize classmates and now recent alums um, who have passed away. And I do just want to recognize Sean Bonner and Natalie um, Dorote. They were more important members of your class. I know they're remembered on this day by their friends, by their family, by other classmates in the college. Can we just give them just a moment of silence? So I thought long and hard about what I wanted to say today. The bar's high. Like you waited two years for this and you traveled back and I wanted to give you a good speech. So to generate some ideas, I, I reached out to you. I reached out first individually to some students, alums, then reached out to the entire class. Um, you have such a unique vantage point. You're, you're far enough out um, so that you're super reflective, but not so far out that you're um, memories are clouded by nostalgia or other things. And I just asked you, for reflections on Denison two years out, on the last two years, and what this place means to you. And I know this isn't the presidential way to say it, but the responses I got back blew me away. They just did. Um, you obviously learned to think and write at this college remarkably well. And your reflections captured the essence and the impact of what we do with intellect, with insight, and with beauty. Um, so I want to read back some of it, what you wrote to me today. I had an earlier draft of this and was told that an hour and a half speech was not going go, to go over well. So this is just a small sampling. But what I've tried to do is to weave your comments together as a mosaic on what it means to be a Denisonian. One of my favorite reflections went as follows. The class discussions, the professors' engagement on and off campus, the smile from Connie or Lynn or any of the dining hall staff when they could sense that you weren't having a good day, the fun and troubles of living in a dorm, the strolls along Chapel Walk, the sound of music wafing out a window of a, of a practice or the roar of cheers for athletics, the beauty of sunsets on Beaver Beach are just a few examples of this special environment we've been so fortunate to grow in together. As I read across your responses, Three themes came up over and over again, and they're as follows. First, Denison's not a complicated place. Um, this college is uniquely defined by the people who come here, the relationships we form with each other, and the way those relationships shape our lives. I love the way two years post-graduation, your relationships continue to anchor your lives. It was so much fun last night watching you at the Moonies. It, you were, you were what, this, what makes this place special. Um, one of your classmates wrote to me, Denison relationships don't just run deep, they also run long. Running into an old friend and feeling like nothing has changed about your friendship is a special feeling. And I feel that way about practically all of my Denison relationships. Another one of you wrote, I've been lucky enough to have three reunion trips with my senior year roommates thus far, this graduation being our fourth. Watching them grow and thrive in their post-grad life and navigate new careers and education has been so special. In typical Denison style, your comments started with friends 
and then moved on to faculty, staff, and now alumni. One of you wrote, I think ultimately what defined my experience at Denison was the faculty and the multiple ways I was able to interact with them. I can name countless professors who started simply as my teacher of a class. They then became a mentor or employed me as a TA or research assistant. I can think of my ultimate mentor and role model, always reminding us to keep moving forward even when the wind was not always at our back and the sun not shining down on our face. They taught me the greatest lesson of perseverance and overcoming challenges. And one more. To re-emphasize what we all know, one of you wrote, what makes Denison special is the people. No pandemic, no early graduation or post-grad life can change how special and happy I feel when I'm with my Denison people. Second, Denison means opportunities and experiences and the way those experiences unlock your potential to be the architect of your life. One of you wrote, there's so many ways you can navigate your path at Denison, and at every decision, you will find people, staff, faculty, or administration who are willing and ready to help you along the way. And as you know, many of the experiences at Denison are not easy. They are hard by design. Our faculty and coaches expect a lot from you because we want a lot for you, and we know you can rise to the occasion. One of you wrote so well, Denison pushes you but it pushes you to become your best self and is filled with people, faculty, coaches, staff, classmates, who are excited to cheer you on through your journey. Denison is a community of different people working towards their own personal sense of purpose while simultaneously and consciously supporting those around them as they do the same. You talked about the power of optimism and believing in progress. I love what one of you wrote, Denison means progress with a healthy dose of celebration of the past, to always be forward-looking and never forget how far we've already come. You also talked about commitments to things larger than yourselves. One of you wrote, Denison means community and being how mindful of, of how your engagements and actions impact broader life and community around you, and to seek mutual ways in which to benefit your community. And third, and I love this one, Denison means gratitude and paying it forward. One of you wrote, it has at times meant sacrifice, compromise, and loads of help from others, recognizing that you have been shaped and arrived where you have in part because of the kindness and assistance of others. And once you're in the position to, you gotta give back and help others who are in the position that you once were. Your reflections about the last two years, they were super interesting. Here's just a few snapshots. You have found, and I would encourage you to keep finding it, that incredible alumni network of 36,000 alums who want to help you succeed in life. One of you wrote, last week, I had the pleasure to attend Denison Everywhere. I was struck by how many alums were in attendance. We filled the whole bar. That's not uncommon for Denisonians. <laughs> and that's when it dawned on me. Being an alumnus of Denison is a continuation of the community on the hill. To me, it means moving to a new city and immediately finding a group of people who I know will have some common values and experiences from our time at Denison. What makes Denison special for me is seeing the D on someone's car and getting a rush in knowing that we've both shared this bond of Denison. Over the last two years, you've adjusted going from lots of structure to far less of it. As one of you wrote, I've had many talks with different friends about the shift in what I felt going from tons of structure while in college to graduating and going through a period when you realize, I really have to be the one who energizes and pushes myself, even more so than before. And so I was able to be reminded that this is the next step. I've gained the necessary skills to do the things I need to do because of the environments and groups that I surround myself in, as well as the care and motivation from the faculty and administration to always seek a better version of yourself while knowing your innate strengths. And not surprisingly at all, and it was so fun to hear this yesterday, last night, and again this morning, you're kicking it out of the park. You have found professional success. 
one of you wrote, the ability to think critically has helped me to build a professional reputation for myself as someone who is a problem solver and someone that my manager and teammates can rely on to get the job done. This ability has earned me a seat at tables at work that I never knew even existed. And I love this quote. One of the biggest takeaways of the last two years is this. If you don't ever pursue something or try something, you will never know what could have happened and how you might have succeeded. And when you are faced with having to create the rest of your life for yourself, I felt empowered, you feel empowered, to become risk tolerant, to recognize nothing ventured, nothing gained, and even if in the moment it is terribly uncomfortable or isn't going the way you planned or hoped, I feel I've learned to become okay with those moments because at some point in my life, I will be able to talk about how it made me better. And finally, um, these quotes just kind of warm my heart. Um, you, wrote, you wrote about what makes Denison special. Denison were the four years where I really established and discovered who I was, what was important to me, and who I wanted to be. It has meant so much to me because through my memories and photos, I can see the transformation that occurred. I think I left Denison smarter, kinder, and more confident individual when I entered the world. When that was cut months short, I felt devastated. But I think the true testament to how much love I felt for the place and the people I had met. Another alum wrote, Denison truly allowed me to open my mind up, to think critically, and fully allow the liberal arts to mold me into a critical thinker who can adapt, learn, and communicate in public and private sphere without missing a beat. I thank Denison for making me the person I am today, for setting me up on my future career path, for introducing me to my closest friends, and for being capable of being my best me. And lastly, one of you wrote, for many, it was the single moment they stepped on this campus that they knew this is where they wanted to be. That was me. I stepped on this campus 10 years ago and fell in love with it. I called my best friend, partner, and in one more week, spouse of 30 years, and said, you gotta come feel this. There's something special here. She was smart enough to get on a plane, to walk on this campus, to talk to our students, to watch what you do in the fall, and she called me and said, if Denison will have you as their next president, we will all come. If they choose somebody else, we will come without you. <laughs> I loved being your president, and I'm honored to welcome you back to complete what we could not complete in 2020. You captured in your emails to me everything that I would ever want to tell recent college grads. So here's my advice to you. Life is defined by relationships and experiences. If your life is filled with healthy relationships and enriching experiences, you will come back to this hill for your 50th reunion filled with pride and gratitude. But the path, it is, ne it is neither linear nor easy. Life is hard. Challenges and failures are both normal and they're important. You learn and develop through the tough moments, giving you the skills, the values, and habits to be the architect of your life, creating the wonderful moments, the successes, and the experiences that you will cherish. Relationships matter. Rely on your Denison friends. They will be there for you for the rest of your life. It's what we do as Denisonians. And education matters. And Denison does it the right way and for the right reasons. We've done it that way for a long time. The world needs more, not less, of what we do and how we do it at this great residential liberal arts college. So let me end. To the great and the most resilient class in Denison history, it was an honor to have you on this campus, and it's wonderful to welcome you back to the Hill. This weekend was special. Last night was probably one of my favorite nights at Denison. You're doing what we want our recent alumni to do. You're living the mission of the college. You're living out the hopes we had for you as students. I miss you, we miss you, and here's our charge to you. Take the education you received here and live our mission. Be autonomous thinkers, discerning moral agents, and engaged citizens. Develop your own views and use it to live a good life in ways that positively impact the world around you, however you define it. To do this, 
you must be lifelong learners. Read often and widely, join book clubs, be patrons of the arts, attend public lectures, set a tone within your communities that learning is important, that facts matter, and are developing, and developing part of fulfilling personal, professional, and civic lives. Embrace and sustain the relationships you formed here. Many of you have already and will continue to remain lifelong friends post Denison. And many of you are becoming and will become lifelong friends with Denisonians who are not friends during your time on the Hill. You've graduated into an alumni community of Denisonians who will provide relationships that contribute to your life in ways that you're only beginning to get a glimpse of today. And finally, stay connected and committed to this college. Come back for your fifth reunion. That's only three years away. I never get to say that at graduation. And when you meet interesting high school students, suggest they look at Denison for, part of, for college. Put a Denison mug on your desk at work if you still go to an office with other human beings in a building. A bumper sticker on your car and put a Denison pennant on your refrigerator at home. Wear a Denison baseball cap when you go out on the weekends. You're great people and we want the world to know that you're Denisonians. Identify yourself so other members of our extended family can do the same. Congratulations to the great Denison class of 2022. I was gonna say earlier, it was, it's nice that we're doing a graduation without the sun out because it gets really hot when the sun is out. The sun is out. So it is now my great pleasure to uh, present to you the chair of the faculty, Jeff Thompson, professor of biology, who will introduce the student speaker for the class of 2020. I'm gonna very briefly go off script. I just wanted to take a moment on behalf of my faculty colleagues to thank all of you for being here and express how awesome it is to see you here today. We lost a moment two years ago and it's great to have a chance to recapture that. It is our tradition at Denison that each year a member of the graduating class addresses the audience during the commencement ceremony. The speaker is chosen through a competitive process by a committee of faculty, staff, and students. The speaker for the class of 2020 was a global commerce and Spanish double major. She was a member of the varsity swim and dive Ive team, an August orientation leader, and a DU lead organizer. In the spring of 2020, she presented a fantastic pre-recorded speech during the virtual conferral of degrees program, and we are very lucky to have her back to bring us remarks in person. Will you please welcome to the podium the speaker for the class of 2020, Michaela Morrison. Good morning. We're back. <laughs> it's good to see you all here today. You look very different than in my living room. But uh, if you somehow didn't make it back from the Moonies last night, I hope you can hear me all the way over there. Um, the class of 2020 would like to thank all the people who made this weekend possible. To the faculty, staff, administration, students, now alumni, and grounds crew who have been working to put together an experience that truly celebrates our class since probably the last time I gave the speech in my living room. Thank you. Your commitment to giving us our moment to have a real graduation experience, complete with being together in this space, amongst our class, and waving excitedly to our loved ones to make sure they know where we are and we're in our seats. By the way, Dad, I'm over here. Uh, it's all deeply appreciated. But seriously, to everyone who, in, who was involved in making this happen, we are very thankful to you for prioritizing the celebration of the class of 2020's time at Denison. Addressing where we are and where we've been is not easy. And having spoken to many of you this weekend, the answer to how have you been has usually been followed up with an awkward chuckle or some variation of I knew this question was coming, but I'm still wholly unprepared to answer it. <laughs> Most likely, at various points over these past two years, there has been a persistent struggle with thoughts of what could have been, or what we missed out on in our last months at Denison. What each of us lost individually varies, of course, but what we all lost were the in-person culmination events, like the celebration of our academic 
and community achievements at the awards convocation in Swayze. We missed being in awe of and applying the mastery of our classmates with their senior performances in Eisner. We couldn't marvel at finalized art portfolios that were planned to be on display in Bryant or Mulberry House. And we missed cheering on our senior athletes in their last season of aiming for conference titles and national championships. And of course, we missed the senior sizzle. To sum it up, we've been through a lot. If this were two years ago, and we were sitting in these same seats, I would focus on telling you that this weekend is about recognizing that we are on the precipice of something great. And we have solidified our ability to be discerning moral agents. But it's been two years. And in those two years, what we have experienced has been significant, both in pain and in triumph. The truth is, we're not the same people who would have sat here before. Many will tell you that college is often about finding yourself about growing and changing into the kinds of people you dreamt about becoming when you were younger. Its culmination is important. And yet again, it's been two years. Two years of headlines to, that bring into sharp focus our humanity, our natural instinct to form communities, and our ability to grow out of necessity. So I believe the important questions this reunion has brought into focus are, who are you now, and what will you take forward with you? As you returned to campus this weekend, I'm sure you were filled with a whole range of emotions. There might have been the excitement and curiosity that echoed what you felt on your very first visit to Denison. Or maybe reconnecting with friends, classmates, professors, the dear, has flooded you with joy as we reshare our memories and stories. But perhaps on the other side of those joyful emotions, there are surprising, complicated feelings of grieving, nostalgia, and bittersweet reminiscing. We spent four years of our lives here, dedicated to bettering ourselves, preparing ourselves, and learning about ourselves. We deserved the chance at entering a world that burst with opportunity after saying our farewells in person and thanking each other for being a part of such a vital time in our lives. Although we didn't get that chance, as Denisonians, we know how to adapt. So we moved forward. And if you take nothing else from this weekend, what I want you to know is this. While, while the four years we spent here may have, been may have transformed us into capable, passionate, and devoted people, the two years we have gone through after our time here are just as crucial to our story. It's part of who we are now. While it doesn't define us, graduating in a pandemic has irre irrevocably altered us. But I would argue that we get to choose what we do with the knowledge that our experience has been hard. And as everyone loves to say, uncertain. Beyond the classroom, we have continued to find what truly matters to us and what keeps us going, both personally and as a collective. Despite shortcomings, we have proven that we are people who are persistent in accomplishing our goals. In the face of what occurred during arguably the most special time of our college experience, we learned how to be brave. So in case no one has told you yet, you should be immensely proud of yourselves. What we have learned is a lesson that goes far beyond the classroom. So what brought you back this weekend? I feel the answer is simple. It's closure. Strong relationships and a strong sense of communi community are two of the foundations of the Denison experience, two principles that were instilled in us at our invocation ceremony in 2016. For us to come back this weekend is a powerful commentary of the impact those two principles had on us and the lives we built here. Even though we've already started creating our lives beyond Denison, this weekend is important for us to celebrate what we accomplished on this tiny hill that takes about 20 minutes to walk across, and 10 if you're really late to class. Anything you achieved at Denison, big or small, deserves recognition. Some of you are the first in your family to receive an undergraduate diploma. Some of you earned academic awards you never dared to dream of. Some of you invigorated groups or clubs with your ideas and leadership and the list goes on. Walking across this stage is a recognition of all of those things that led to us earning our degrees from this fair college on the hill. And it is a reminder that we are made up of so much more than just our academic experiences. The academics and the vast opportunities are what drew us to Denison in 2016, but the relationships and the community that we have created, matured, and prioritized are what bring us back in 2022 and stays with us as we go forward. 
And so I want to share a poem with you all I came across by Morgan Harper Nichols that exemplifies what I want to leave you with. She writes, I hope one day you will look back and find you were growing in ways you could not see at the time. For even though there were a million different ways the story could have played out, there are also a million different things that fell into place to bring you to where you are right now. And even though there's still much left to figure out, your heart has learned to sing a song that can hold the tension of things. And for all that will happen, and with time you might forget, I hope you can look back and remember at least one moment like this, taking a moment to exhale before it all made sense. Class of 2020, thank you so much. Thank you for returning. Congratulations. That was awesome. Could we give Michaela one more round of applause? James, you sure you want to follow that? No. <laughs> um, so we're pleased to have trustee James Anderson, class of 1985, uh, being our keynote speaker today. James was a theater major at Denison, and today he is a leader in the communications industry. He was most recently the head of corporate communications and marketing for Warner Media, and is currently serving as the interim head of communications for CNN Worldwide. James has served as a Denison trustee since 2010, He's been highly engaged in this role as a trustee and has been an invaluable advisor to the college in navigating communica challenging communications waters, especially throughout the COVID pandemic. We look forward to hearing what, what he has to share with us today. James, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and for being here. No, I did not want to follow Michael, but here we are. Um, and Adam mentioned the sun, and as a theater major, fortunately, I called the shade to come because there's nothing worse for a bald black man than the sun beaming down on his head. So if I start to drip, I have a handkerchief and my water. So go along with me here. Uh, thank you, President Weinberg for that kind introduction, and thank you for this incredible and nerve-wracking opportunity to address the class of 2020. As a Denison alum and member of the university's board of trustees, I am truly honored and also proud to share this stage on this special occasion with my fellow board member, Catherine. However, I am also not kidding myself. I stand here today with a lot of humility because I am clearly aware that I was not Adam's first choice to speak to the class of 2020. And it's okay. I mean, look, after what this class went through, you deserved star power, hilarity, inspiration beyond belief. And though I am a proud member of that beloved Denison Improv group, I have a feeling when Adam said, get me that guy from Burpee CD, it wasn't me. <laughs> he was talking about your other famous virtual commencement speaker from 2020. So since you're already alum, I need you to treat me as a fellow alum and humor me today. And let's just pretend that Steve was the fifth choice for this today and just come along with me on this ride. I hope I'm going to take us on. But seriously, I want to start first with welcoming the parents, the friends, loved ones, and members of the Denison community. It is wonderful to come together to celebrate this significant and wild overdue milestone. And the fact that we get to do it in person, how incredible is that? To the class of 2020, welcome home. Wow, what a year you had. We are so happy to celebrate you and your accomplishments here at your alma mater. Throughout your time at Denison, you honed skills and acquired knowledge in everything from art history and computer science to global health and sociology. You forged lasting friendships. You ate Wits frozen custard and snaggles at the Bandersnatch. And you rallied to the finish line amidst unprecedented challenges. I'm sure two words you probably never, ever want to hear again because you've heard it over and over and over again over the last couple of years. 
When you received your degree in 2020, we were in the early stages of the pandemic. We were struggling to navigate a new world with ever evolving COVID guidelines and information. Many of us were told to return home to study and work and cancel vacations, holidays, and weddings. We were told not to gather in groups of more than 10 and certainly not in groups of hundreds or thousands for commencement ceremonies. We felt isolated, insulated, cocooned in our homes, zooming with the frustration of trying to figure out how to work that freaking mute and hand wave button. We were sanitizing and of course, hoping for a vaccination or a vaccine. And on top of all this, you were facing one of the biggest questions of your adult life. Now what? As new graduates, you were interviewing online, beginning new jobs, remotely, or thinking about graduate school. Each new step encumbered with unknowns. Now, two years later, while not completely out of the woods, we have rejoined a world that again includes restaurants, cultural events, in-person work for some of us where we are realizing that that person we are meeting for the first time off of Zoom, man, is he really short. And I grew a beard. So just this spring has faithfully and thankfully emerged with the occasional, see, just like that, blue skies and profusions of blooms, hope too, is emerging, and with it a feeling of gratitude. Many of you or many of us are now planning trips, enjoying family gatherings, and visiting friends. And here we are today, celebrating the class of 2020, finally. Some people say that the world has forever changed since the pandemic, but we, one know, but we know one thing that remains the same. A college degree is still an amazing achievement and will always remain true. With graduation comes a range of highs and lows, excitement, relief, uncertainty, gratitude, and pride. And when you graduated, you faced and might still be facing that same burning question. Now what? Don't feel bad about that. It's a great question and one we should ask ourselves often. Your answers may surprise you. Now, it's been a long time. I mean, a long time. I mean, you see the gray in the bed. Since I graduated from Denison with a theater degree. But I remember that feeling well. In fact, like many of you, it was January of my senior year when I started to turn my attention to the question, now what? My plan was murky at best. I was hoping for a career path to present itself. I knew I was interested in the arts and media, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. Now, I could go home and regroup, but as I'm sure many of you know, once you sort of get a taste of four years of independence, and you start wondering, hmm, I'm sure my parents know I was creeping back to Shawnee at 3 a.m. from Columbus, but just in case, I better figure out a plan because if I go home and the moment they ask me and where do you think you're going when I'm leaving at midnight, it's not gonna be pretty. Now I loved my parents, but I knew I needed a plan. And so here's how it started. I had done an internship my second semester of junior year in New York. One that I didn't know at the time would eventually lay the groundwork for the career I have today. After trying to reconnect with the people I had worked for during that time, I found out that one of the executives was now an associate producer on the hottest show in the country at that time, The Cosby Show. During that same time, one of my best friends found out that he had been accepted into Columbia University for grad school. And as we both were sharing our news, the light bulb went off. The light bulb went off and we said, that's it. We're moving to New York together and we're doing it right after graduation. And we're also gonna convince one of our other friends to come along with us so we can really act like we're not scared, but we are. I told my parents, and as always, they were very supportive. They said, you will always have a home to come back to. You will never starve because we will continue to send you those care packages when needed. But oh, by the way, we do not have New York rent money, my friend. So, translation, 
what's your plan? I mean, they had a point. Honestly, by the time I was getting close to graduating, I wasn't even entirely sure what my plan would be, besides making sure we at least had a place to live that we could afford. And then when I got to New York, I would try to connect with this person from my internship and hope that it would lead to something. So the day after graduation, only we were on the other side there, we rented an ugly gray station wagon, took a shot of water at Crawford, packed up our four years from Denison, and headed to New York City. I mean, now we were Denison students after all, so we did have a little strategy behind what I know a lot of people thought was an impulsive move. So as I said, we had a plan to where we were going to live. And that plan was where we were gonna sublet at Barnard College, which would always go co-ed for the summer. To avoid the need of those emergency care packages right away from our parents, two of us found jobs our first week there working at restaurants so that we could bring leftover food home. The other friend got a job at Mrs. Field's Cookies, and he could bring home all the rejected cookies. So we also had dessert every night. I mean, come on, guys, you have to admit, that was brilliant. That is critical thinking here, right? You know, that college degree was coming in handy already. Well, after two weeks in the city, and lots of crumbled white chocolate chip cookies. It was time to get serious, and I reached out to that connection. So I sat down and I wrote a letter. Yes, I told you it's been a long time. There was no email, there was no text, there was no Slack. I wrote a letter, and two weeks later, I heard from this guy, hoping that he would remember me and hoping that I could talk to him about my interest in trying to figure out how to get into the industry. He called me up and said, I remember you, kid. Come in, let's talk. Let's talk about this thing called a production assistant. He said, the pay is low, the hours are long. I said, I'm serving coffee, that sounds perfect. It turned out to be a graduate school level education in entertainment and production. And I ended up staying with that company, Carsey Werner, for 20 years, developing skills, listening, learning, and advancing a little bit at a time. That is why the key piece of advice that I offer students and graduates facing their now what moment is this. Get your foot in the door. Your first offer may not be the job of your dreams or anywhere near it, but if it's in the industry you want or at a company you really like, it's far easier to navigate from inside that company than try to doing it outside. Gaining experience is your critical next step, and yes, I know, I sound like Adam, I sound like your parents, but it truly is the next step for many. As a new graduate, I was willing to start on the ground floor. In fact, after our sublet ended in New York, I didn't have a plan for where I would live once my friend moved into his Columbia housing and other friends moved back home. So until I could find a place that I could afford, I literally slept on my friend's dorm floor for six months while he pursued his master's degree at Columbia and all the rumors were spreading across the university campus. <laughs> 37 years later, I am still good friends with those classmates. So hey, Anthony Smith, and a major thanks to Michael Dowling for that floor. And I still have my apron from that restaurant job at Adam G's Bistro. As a first-generation college student and a proud kid from Baltimore, it is a reminder of my appreciation for the career and life I have been fortunate to have, and also for the hard work I put in to have this life and the sacrifices of my family to help me get here. But I also like to tell that story to give hope to those who are still trying to find their path or get that first break. Hang in there. It's coming. People sometimes ask me how I went from being a theater major to doing what I do now. With the experiences and preparation I received at Denison, I got my foot in the door and I kept going. I had no idea that PR or this thing called strategic communications and marketing would be my calling. One day it found me when the company needed someone to coordinate all the media requests coming in and the producer I was working for at the time simply said, 
James can do that. And the rest is history. Despite what we've heard, there are more than just two paths that diverge in the woods. A liberal arts degree opens up a multitude of paths. And because the world is constantly changing and innovating, you will be prepared for the opportunities that come your way. That is the beauty of the degree you've earned. You have been taught to think critically, adapt, and problem solve. And the connections you've made here will help build your network for life. I encourage you to be open to new possibilities and paths along the way. For me, that has made all the difference. So, class of 2020, if you're asking yourself now, now what? I encourage you to explore answers that may not be so obvious. Take a chance. Reach out to that contact from junior year. See where the unexpected carries you. Get your foot in the door. And don't worry if that door doesn't look like the one you imagined. You know, it's, it's interesting for me to be back here now because I am having a so full circle moment today because I too am asking myself again, now what? From producing or from promoting sitcoms to covering wars, great sporting events, elections, horrific tragic events, and everything in between, 37 years after driving down that hill, I'm about to close the chapter on what has been a blessed career for me and an amazing experience. And it started with an internship I received during my time here at Denison. And I can't wait to explore what's next as you guys are out there exploring what's next for you. I also hope you continue to treasure the friendships and the connections you have made here. From the friend who met me in front of Park National Bank when the Greyhound bus dropped me off there to start freshman year, and yes, that was a thing back then. You, you came in from Columbus and you got dropped off with your trunk and everything else in front of Park National Bank. To the ones I've met over four years during my time at Denison, they continue to play a significant part of my life. And some of them are here today. So, it is great that you've returned this weekend. Cherish it. Cherish the fireworks from last night. It was an incredible moment. The class of 2020 graduated in the most trying times in memory. Between a global pandemic and traumatic events that forced us to have candid conversations around the concrete actions needed for an inclusive, equitable, and just society, 2020 was definitely a year for the history books. I believe the challenges you have faced will give you strength and fortitude that will serve you well as you navigate at what you're experiencing right now and whatever comes next. Whatever the challenges and opportunities you face, we wish you the best of luck. And just to show you that I was not kidding, because I was a theater major here, I brought a prop or rather, a piece of wardrobe. This is my apron from Adam Jeeves Beefstro, and I am not putting it on. This is my other wish for you. And no, you silly people, I'm not wishing you an apron. Work with me here. I'm talking metaphors, analogies. Um, my wish is that you end up having your own version of an apron in whatever form it may be so that you can look back and be proud of the journey you've been on, even if it did come with lots of detours. And trust me, it will. And just remember, when you find yourself asking, now what? Reach out to your Denison family who could not be prouder of you class of 2020, my God, finally, we can say congratulations in person. Congratulations. So now you know why James was my first choice to be your speaker. You, you notice he used the words, um, 
closed the chapter. I think that was a ref veiled reference to the fact that he thinks he's going to retire. He's now told me three times in the last two years he's going to retire. Every time he tells me that, within a two-week period, I open up the Times and the Journal. He's on the front page with the promotion. The, the latest, as some of you may know, CNN hit some turmoil this spring and made some leadership changes at the top, and I kind of scratched my head and thought, who's going to pick up those pieces? And next day, there's James's picture on the front page of the paper picking up the pieces. Um, can we give James a round of applause? So there are a few things that have changed since you were here. Uh, the new wellness center that you helped encourage us to build will open up in about three weeks. And the other is Dr. Laurel Kennedy has now become Dr. Alex Miller. So it is my pleasure to call upon Dr. Alex Miller, Vice President for Student Life, to preside over the presentation of the members of the class of 2020. Will the members of the class of 2020 Please stand. Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting to you the members of the Denison University Class of 2020. Denison Class of 2020, we're thrilled to have you back on campus for this long-awaited celebration. I hereby reaffirm the conferral of your degrees on May 22nd, 2020. Congratulations, you are now the first class in Denison history to graduate twice from this college. To the great class of 2020, please be seated. I will now read the names of the graduates of the class of 2020. Graduates, staff will direct you row by row to come forward and cross the stage. Presidential Medalist and Co-Governor Loriana Jacobs. Co-Governor Nora Riley. Presidential Medalist and Trustee Ben Cross. Presidential Medalist Alina Panic. <laughs> Presidential Medalist Jaden Richardson. <laughs> Presidential Medalist Gavin Thomas. <laughs> Presidential Medalist Sarah Wilson. <laughs> Willem Ackerman. Logan Agen, Bennett Allison, Matt Ambrosino, Isabella Antonelli, Marcos Arnett, Katie Aukamp. Cassidy Odette. Neil Austria. Benton Bear. Bradley Baldinger. Sarah Balraj. Jared Barlow. Kira Barr, 
Matthew Bartlett. Paul Bass. Charlie Bassett. Libby Beach. Nathaniel Beach. Francisco Besseril. Jordan Beck. Catherine Belfance. Annalise Binshop. Beatrice Blumenthal. Robert Bowles. Elihu Bardo. Emma Borgia. Brendan Boyle. William Brady. James Braham. Arika Bramwell. Eric Birch Brenstetter. Morgan Brazier. Indira Bridges. Ellie Broker. Grace Broomhead. Sydney Brown. Fred Brew. <laughs> Christopher Broyles. Jaylee Burzma. Patrick Burgett. Addie Buzas. Kayla Byerly. Andrew Campo. Jordan Cardinali. Sarah Carley. Jennifer Carr. Mia Cotillo. Furman Cervantes. Margaret Chandler. Sydney Chandler. Meredith Chauvin. Naomi Clayton. Ada Cleary. Lindsay Clemson. Gilly Cole. <laughs> Caroline Colville. <laughs> Kenny Connolly. <laughs> Zach Correa. <laughs> Carlos Evan Joseph Tongdong Cortez. <laughs> Jack Cutler. Diana Cowie. Veronica Danshin. Laura Danielson. Isabel Davis. Matthew Davis Morin. Lucy Deal. Harrison Dechant. Nicholas DeChant. Nathan Delahunty. Patrick Desmet. James Jedediah Styles Dixie. Tyler Dufferin. Ben Dutkin. 
Angelica Aaron Schinder. Julia Elderingham. Sam Edwards. John Furno. Christopher Fisher. Emily Fisher. Allison Fitzgerald. Bryce Flickinger. Kylie Ford. Benjamin Foster. Michael Frasian. Micah Frankel. Allison Gackenheimer. Manon Ginerwala. Robin Gary. Jordan Gelber. Matt Garrix. Eric Gerlock. Phoebe Gilbert. Julia Giordano. Carly Grandjean. Henry Gray. Alexis Grimm. Renee Gritska. Haley Goldquist. Ishan Gupta. Kimberly Gutierrez. Mark Haddad. Riley Hammond. Sarah Hamray. Charlotte Happel. Kira Araguay. Annie Hartman. Morgan Hatton. Elizabeth Lee Heyman. Claire Head. Paris Healy. <laughs> Alec Heilman. Maggie Heiser. Nayeli Hernandez. Lauren, Lauren Hofer, excuse me. William Hoffman. Lady Mama. <laughs> Ashley Holden. Grace Horn. Connor Howe. Claire Hoy. Christopher Shu. Aiden Honorino. Ryan Issa. Julian Yanchek. 
Griffin Jeanette. Andrew Johnston. Anne Karashurides. Kevin Katz. Jordan Key. Nate Kern. Christian Kelly. Grant Kelly. Tatum Kelly. Taylor Kern. Sierra King. Casey Kirby. Amy Kirk. Araya Kirkhope. Ryan Klimpner. Joanna Kleindenst. Good on that one. Claire Kolf. Andrew Kopko. Catherine Coons. Jacqueline Kirkjen. Dorian Lacey Garita. Dara Laja. Dazni Lakpriya. Alexander Laverick. Angela Lay. Haley LeBlanc. Joshua Lee. Sydney Lerda. Hunter Lewis. Caroline Lewis. Sarah Lynchburg. Madison Lidbeck. Katherine Lindsay. Caroline Little. Jordan Lobel. Lauren Longbreak. Tariq Longsworth. Oh, sex! Ice! <laughs> Samuel Looker. Diana Lopez Leong. Katie Lotane. Catherine Loveday. Lynn Ma. Ivan Moldenano. Isabel Mariani. Mitchell Marston. Emily Martin. Ethan McAtee. Riley McConnell. Parker McDaniel. Sydney McDavid. 
Matthew McHugh. Graham McIntosh. Austin McManus. Peter McManus. Delaney McRitchie. Sophia Minconi. Catherine Messeros. Alexander Muir. Mackenzie Mick. Cecil Millen. Josie Miller. Maggie Miller. Calvin Montgomery. William Moore. Michaela Morrison. Jamie Lex Moya. Brendan Murphy. Madison Murray. Kate Nagel. Christopher Nacon. Tovi Naderveld. Emily Nicholson. Aureli Nunez. Gabriella Nutter. Maggie O'Neill D. Aaron O'Connor. Elizabeth Obrecht. Vanessa Ocampo. Gabrielle Oliveri. Elsie Parmar. Yeah. Hannah Putaka. Zoe Pierce. Gabrielle Peeker. Gabriela Perez. Leander Perrin. Dana Phillips. Emma Finney. Allison Pinta. Gabriela Blaitez Gomez. Samantha Pollock. Julia Prusi. Jacqueline Pryor. Maeve Price. Samantha Price. Isabella Puccini. Tuli Chen Terrell. Maeve Quinn.
Brenna Raider. Caitlin Riley. Lane Ratzer. Matthew Reed. Jack Renwick. Emily Riho. Emma Reardon. David Rivas. Jack Robinson. Mitch Rotondo. John Ruddy. William Rudolph. Matthew Rush. Hannah Rusinko. Allison Schaefer. Jared Sheff. Trevor Showman. Trent Scholten. Jane Scott. Kimani Sr. Kivash Shariri. Thank you. Daniel Shapiro. Julia Shelby. Brooke Schuler. Caroline Schumate. Ravish Siddiqui. Sarah Spire. L. Stevens. Brooke Stiles. James Street. Bryce Stricker. Sarah Stumpf. Madeline Sue. Jamie Swickard. Julia Talent. Alexandra Terleski. Cody Tiemann.
Emmy Timberlake. Elizabeth Toygo. Bryn Tomsack. Maddie Torres. Ivy Trevino. Trevino. Michaela Trimpy. Alexandra Tubbs. Lauren Turner. Ariana Vaughn. Vival Victor. Julia Wainwright. Cammy Walter. Robert Wang. Shabo Wong. Louis Wise. Karen Welch. Peyton Weltke. Jack Warner. Nicole Waytuska. Zoe Whalen. Katie Wilhelm. Catherine Williams. Robert Williams. Yang Yi Yi. Nick Yaley. Natalie Zavarella. Andrew Zellers. Thank you very much. Rachia Chang. Verence Zoltan. Andy Zuki. You know, it's nerve-wracking doing all those names when you've been on campus with students for four years, but to do that sight unseen, can we give Dr. Miller a round of applause? <laughs> and Victor, it was great to see you dance one last time. You are always welcome to come back to this campus and dance. Um, so we're going to welcome some of your classmates up on stage to help us sing the alma mater. Um, as you know, it's our tradition to close each commencement ceremony with the singing of the first verse of To Denison. Um, as they're walking, the, the, coming to the stage, I just want to make just a couple last comments. Um, I want to end where we started, which is just thanking you for coming back. Um, there will be moments in life when moments just kind of don't turn out the way you hope they will. And 
one of the truisms in life is you try to take those moments, reinvent them, and do them even better. And, and I hope that's what we were able to do this weekend for you. You deserved it. I want to thank all your classmates who helped organize today and helped get people to turn out. Um, this exceeded all of our wildest expectations. And, and I'll just end with kind of a, a personal reflection. You will come back for your 50th reunion in 2070. I will be 105. Um, so I am not likely to be the president, um, but I am hoping that I'll still be teaching in the anthropology and sociology department if Dr. Davis and Dr. G will let me. Um, but I would encourage you about a year, maybe two years before your 50th, to reach out to the college and just remind them that it's your two-year celebration graduation. The college promised that the Moonies were going to be yours for the entire reunion weekend, and that you're expecting a big party with lots of food and alcohol and fireworks. <laughs> so congratulations. Um, thanks for being great Denisonians. We are remarkably proud of you. Oh, and I do want to remind people, so we're going to sing the first verse of To Denison, our alma mater. Um, we are then, they're going to sing it once for us, and then we're going to join them in singing it together. If you don't know the words, we want your diploma back. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the words, they're actually in your program. And then we're going to recess, and then I'll remind people that there's brunch on the A quad, right? Great. to do that again, but we love the celebration, the practice run. Um, will everyone please be seated while the platform party and the faculty recess? If you've lost your hat and you want to grab it, you get to throw it again. After the recessional, Associate Provost Kim Specht will dismiss the graduates for the ceremonial turning of the tassels and the tossing of the mortar boards.
of the class of 2020. Please join together as a class in turning your tassels from right to left to signify it's official. You may now celebrate by tossing your mortarboards.